Hello and welcome to a new video from PP series or Power Pivot tutorial. This video is PP02. In this video, we are going to look at the data extraction and data modeling, and we are going to discuss six topics. First one will be four ways to import data to the data model. Next, we are going to look at how we can work with 10 million rows of data. And then we are going to discuss the star schema. And then we're going to look at implicit measure and explicit measure. And we're going to understand what is the difference between both of them. Next one will be three DAX functions, sum, count, and left. And finally, we're going to look at three different places to write DAX measures inside Excel. Before jumping into Excel, let's have a look at the practical example that we have today. In this example, we are going to mash up some tables from different locations inside my laptop in order to make some reports based on this data. So what we have in terms of data, we have a folder containing eight CSV files, each and every file of these CSV files containing the sales data for a separate year. So we have eight years, 2011 up to 2018, each and every file of these CSV files, approximately 300 megabyte of size and also contains around a million row of data. So we can call these eight tables as transaction tables because they are containing the sales transaction for each and every year and the data inside these tables are as follows you can see a preview a small preview of the data inside these tables like this one so we have the product id the channel id region id date quantity and discount on the other hand we have some lookup tables we have actually three lookup table or dimension tables first one will be the channel uh, lookup table containing the name of the channel and also the ID of the channel and obviously you can link between the channel ID inside the transaction table and the channel ID inside the lookup table as you can see here. Also we have a region table containing the name of the region and the region ID and obviously again you can link between the region ID inside the lookup table and the region ID inside the eight transaction tables. Finally we have the product table containing the product ID. Obviously again you can link between the ID here and the ID here and you have the product name the category of the product and finally the price and you can use the price coming from the product table with the data of the sales like the quantity and discount in order to calculate the revenue for each and every transaction we have these eight files in a folder contains csv files we have this small table formatted as a table inside excel workbook also, we have this small table as a cell range, normal cell range inside the same workbook. So both of these two tables inside the same workbook, but the product table is saved also in Excel workbook, but another separate Excel workbook, not the same like these two tables. And what we want to do, we are trying to connect to all of this information, eight transaction tables and three dimension table, each and every one of them saved in a separate file, in a separate location inside my PC. We are going to try to answer this requirement. First one, the annual quantity sold by product, region, and then the channel. Second one, the number of transaction, also by product, region, and channel. And finally, the average quantity per transaction, which is obviously the total quantity divided by number of transaction. And also, we want to look at this by product and region and by channel. And and for sure we are going to use the power pivot in order to achieve this requirement. I'm going to start the first step by adding these two sets of info as we mentioned before here is two of our dimension or lookup table the region table and the channel table I'm going to send these two tables inside the power pivot or the data model so first one I'm going to try the first option is to convert this table into a table format in order to do this I'm going to select any cell inside the table and I'm going to press Ctrl and T. Here is the shortcut to convert any range into table. Asking you if your table has headers, the answer is OK. This will convert the range into a table format. From the table design ribbon, let's give a meaningful name to this table. Let me call this one region and then enter. Now I'm ready. I can just send this 
to the power pivot I can do this simply by selecting any cell inside the table going to power pivot ribbon I'm going to select add this to data model once I click on it it will launch the power pivot window and you can see here your data is coming inside the power pivot window I have the name of the table here and I have all the data inside this area so let's try something in order to make sure that we understand the benefit of converting the data into a table before sending it to the power pivot so i'm going back to the excel window and let me add another city or region let's uh, select port saeed p-o-r-t saeed and then i'm going to add uh, a new code 3008 for an example and then enter because i started to write in the first empty row the table itself expanded and if i go back to the power pivot window i can just only do a refresh while selecting the table i'm going to click on refresh and you will see that the new record added automatically and this is very beneficial and very pow powerful let's try to do this also on the columns i'm going to add any column here like let me write a new piece of info like sector and let me add something like great cairo for Cairo and Giza Cairo and Giza together you can call them Great Cairo so I just added only two pieces of info just in order to make sure that this will be updated inside the power pivot window so let me go back and then refresh once I click on refresh success eight rows transferred close here you go the new data updated and this is perfect and here is the benefit of adding the data from excel table you can get your data updated whenever you add or remove any data i don't need for this data so let me delete the column and also let me get rid of this row go back and select refresh and i am now back to my original table no problem at all the second step is to add the channel table inside the data model or to send it to the power pivot window and this time i'm going to try something different so i'm going to select the entire range i'm going to select any cell inside the range and then Control a to select all and then Control c to copy and then going back to the power pivot window on the left hand side from the home ribbon you'll see the paste icon if you just click on it it will open this small window paste Re preview and here asking you how you want to create your table first question is about the table name let me call it something like channel and then preview of the data and asking you if the first row is the column header or not in this case it's correct so i'm going to click on ok and here you go you have the new table created and for sure it's very obvious that if i add any record here it will not be updated because it is just copy and paste it is not link like what we did inside the table format option i'm going to add another channel let me call it the direct channel and the code will be 4005 and i want to add only this record so let me just copy the last record going back here and if you just select the table on the left hand side again from the home ribbon you will see the clipboard section you will find that i have paste append and paste replace in my case i want to append so i'm going to select paste append and here is the dialog box that can help you to do so so i'm going to click on ok and here you go you have the new data appended as you can see here now i want to delete this you cannot actually delete directly from the pivot table window so i'm going to do another trick i'm going to get rid of this record again i'm going to select the original data go back to power pivot this time i'm going to use paste replace and for sure i need to exclude first row and then click on ok and here you go your data back to the original so again you have a solution in order to add or remove data but it's much better to convert into a table so it will be linked just you need to refresh and all the update will come to the power pivot window so now i need to add the product the product lookup table and as we mentioned before it is inside another workbook i call this workbook lookup tables it has uh, several sheets the one that i want to use is the second one the product sheet and you can see here the data i have the product id the product name category price and commission point which is something that i don't want uh, so i'm going to just exclude it from the loading to the data model so in order to correctly point and connect to this data i need to save it and then 
close the file and from the same file I'm going to select the power pivot window and inside the power pivot window I'm going to get external data section from the home ribbon and I'm going to select from other sources I'm going to scroll down 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 the second last option is Excel file let me select and then click on next first step is to put the path of the Excel file or just you can browse here is my file lookup tables and then open I have here the path the file path and don't forget to just click on this one use first row as column header actually it is a very strange place to put this because I, I cannot see the data right now it is inside the file but this is the only place that can you check this box so you can you just need to do it right now use first row as column header and then click on next here is all the objects inside this workbook i just need the sheet called product so let me select the sheet called product and then I have several options I can just click on finish or I can just do the preview and filter which is I always prefer so let me do the preview here is the data that I already previewed inside the Excel sheet no need for me to take the commission so I can just uncheck on the top of the of the column so now I'm going to just take the product ID product name category and then the price and then I'm going to click on OK and finally i'm going to click finish here you go you have the message saying that success and you have 25 rows transferred once you click on close you will see the 25 lines of this file already uploaded into the data model at the current stage i have inside my model three tables all my lookup tables already inside the model the region lookup table the channel lookup table and the product lookup table now I want to start to bring inside the model the transactions table and as, as I mentioned before it is inside a folder containing eight separate CSV file each one representing the sales transaction of a separate year from 2011 up to 2018 so I want to start to point to the first file which is sales 2011 I'm going back to the power pivot window from the get from get external section in the home ribbon I'm going to select from other sources and I'm going to scroll down up till the last option which is from text file and this option is working for both text and CSV files so I'm going to select and click on next then I'm going to browse and here is my folder CSV 2011-2018 I start with the first file sales 2011 and then open here you go I have here directly the preview of my data I can use here the use first row as a column header that's fine I'm going to preview the data everything's fine I have some information that I can get rid of first one is the sales rep ID no need for this piece of info I need the product the channel segment no need for it let me uncheck then region is okay date quantity and discount all is fine I can just click on finish it is retrieving the data you can see that I have 430 and still counting 897 rows has been transferred if you click on close you will see that a new table created called sales 2011 so let me check the data now I have here the product ID if you check the format of the data it is whole number that's fine I have also the channel ID data type also whole number region whole number data is date that's fine it's pretty good I can just change the format of the data of the date so I can have something uh, easier to read let me take something like uh, this one so I have uh, the day and then I have the month and day and finally the year so this is okay then I have the quantity again whole number and final discount this one should be percentage but you can see it is text so something wrong here let me try to help Excel to identify data type so let me change this to something like decimal number it's giving me an error so it cannot understand the data like a decimal number so I can do some transformation here I can add some new column and try to do some transformation so to add a column I will just click on the add column here and let me give it a name so let me call it like disk I cannot give the same uh, name so I'll give it just an abbreviation like disk and then enter it will prompt me to the formula bar and let's try to write a formula in order to change actually what I want to do is to separate the percent uh, from the discount so I can use a function like lin something like lin so let me try lin exactly the same that we use in Excel so l e n so I'm going to count the string inside this column and then close 
the bracket and enter and let's see what will happen so I have here the count of each and every line of this 890,000 throws. Let's take the first line as an example. I want to extract the 1 and 7 and leave out the percent. In this case, I have three characters here. So I want to extract only two. So I want to subtract one from the len function. So I'm going up again to the formula bar and then minus one and enter. Here I have uh, two as a count. Actually, each and every one is two. I don't think I have anything uh, but two, but just in case if you have a single digit percent, it will give you one. So you need to calculate it like this. And then I'm going to use the function left. The function left will look at the result of the function len. It will be in the first row. The result is two. So it will bring the first two characters of the string inside the discount column. So let me, before the len function, I'm going to write left, L-E-F-T. I'm going again to give the column of, the, of discount and then comma and the number of characters will be the output of then function at end I'm going to close the bracket and click OK and here you go I have now the number separated from the percent at this stage I can just convert the entire column from text to a decimal number and this will work perfectly the final final step is to divide this by 100 so I can see it as a percent or a decimal place so it's now working perfectly I have the discount uh, correct now the data type is decimal number which is fine I can change the format to percentage so display is meaningful for me and I can reduce decimal place to only one so I can have a good review for the data so using the DEX the left function and len function I managed to do some transformation to the data it is not that easy like the power query I can what I can do using power query however it's still doable I can do some tricks here and there let's look at what we have now we have now four tables, three lookup tables, region, channel, and the product. And I have only one transaction table, which is basically sales for 2011. If you want to include all the years inside the same model, if you follow this method, you need to add another seven tables the same way that we did for uh, sales 2011. And also you need to do the transformation once more every time. And I think this is not practical. Again, if you look at the diagram view, if you want to start to build relations, you are going to do a relation between sales 2011 and each and every one of these lookup tables using the product ID to connect with the products, using the channel ID to have a relation with the channel table and region ID to have a relation with the region uh, table. So it is painful and actually it's very bad design for your table. So the ultimate solution for this is to have one transaction table containing all the sales from 2011 through 2018. And the best way to do this is for sure the Power Query. And Power Query is working perfectly as a data machine that can send data directly inside the data model. And let's start to do this together. I'm going to select this table and then delete. Don't worry. I don't need it. We're going to use Power Query. Let's go back to the normal Excel window. I'm going to Data Ribbon, my friend Power Query on the left hand side, Get and Transform. Let me go directly to Get Data from File. As we mentioned before, our data inside a folder containing CSV files. So I'm going to use from folder this will open browser asking for the folder name and here you go the folder name is csv 2011 2018 i'm going to point at it and then click on open now it's connecting i have now the list of all files inside this folder you can notice the eight files listed here i can choose between combine load and transform data always i'm going to use transform data in order to trigger the power query editor and do all the required transformation so now I have the eight files. If you look at the most left column, you you'll see something called binary, 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 and each and every record. I have eight records, one for each uh, file. If you select the empty place beside the word binary, and you look down, you'll see the name of the file written here. So here is the actual file, but I want the data inside the file, not the file itself. In order to do this, I need to add a custom column and use a function called csv.document. I'm going to select the add column ribbon and then custom column. It will open the custom column window. No need to change the name because I'm going to get rid of this column anyway. So just leave it custom and let's try to write the function together. csv 
and then dot the screen assistance is helping me I can just double click on this one and then open bracket I need to select the content content basically the first column which contains the file itself so here is all the available columns I'm going to select content and then insert and then close the bracket and click on OK and here you go a new custom column created if you select the empty space now here beside the table the word table for each line you will see the data now here is the data inside each and every file not the file itself and I have here all the columns required there's a small problem here I want to solve you can notice that the first row is not the headers and this is not the best case for me I need this first row to be the header for each and every file in order to do so I'm going to use another function called table.promoteheaders and I'm going to use it inside the same custom column so on the applied steps on the right hand side I can just click on the wheel this will open the custom column window again I can go before the CSV document and start to write my new function which is table.promoteheaders and then I can open a bracket at the beginning and another bracket at the end and here you go let me click on OK and let's preview the data again now you can see everything is set the first column becomes the header of the table so now I am ready to expand these tables but before doing this I need to change the name of the query to be something that is meaningful instead of the name of the folder so let me call it something like all sales this means this query contains the data for all the sales now I need only the custom column I can just select right click and remove other column and simply I'm going to expand using this arrows pointing to outside if you just click on it you are going to expand your tables don't forget to uncheck user original column name as prefix and also there's some columns that I don't need I can just get rid of them right now no need for the sales rep ID no need for the segment and I need the rest so I'm going to click on OK and here you go you have all the data fantastic and clean and you have all the eight files appended together in one go so you need to do the same work every time you add a new year but now I need to add a very important step which is just detecting the correct data types because if you look at the headers everything is now not set as data type so I need to just go to transform while selecting all the columns just click on detect data type it will correct all the data types and everything now is okay and you look at the discount now it's working perfectly what happened when we try to just send it direct to the power pivot it was a very big problem and we had to write a couple of DAX formulas in order to overcome that issue but here automatically detected as percent and everything is okay the only problem that I'm still having here is the date because you can see here the date is written like 18 01 11 this means that starting with the day and the month and finally uh, the year but this is not the settings of my device my device is set like the American style which is starting with the month then the day and finally the year so I need something to uh, correct this so this is very easy I can just go to this icon which is basically uh, the change type icon if I click on it I have the very last option which is using locale if you click this it will help you to change another uh, regional setting for just this column so as you can see my default is uh, English United States I'm going to select English United Kingdom the European style is starting with the day and then the month and finally the year and this is typically what I have inside this uh, date column this time don't forget to change the text to date so I need this to be date using the uh, United Kingdom style and here you go the example uh, 29th uh, March 2016 so here is the example so it's working correctly with my uh, column containing the date if I click OK now it is uh, corrected and now it is converted to date this query is ready I can just uh, close and load let me go to the home ribbon close and load close and load two. where I'm going to load this one actually no need to put it on a table because it has like 8 million rows there's no point to put it on a table it will not be able to put it on a table again no need for pivot table now I need to mingle this or I need to blend this with other tables so the perfect way is to do only create connection and you have to check add this uh, data to the data model and click on OK and now the query will appear the query and connection pane and you have your query here and the 8 million rows are going to be sent directly to the data model for sure it will take some time at the time of loading but you will be amazed by the speed when you create a pivot table using this data you will be amazed by the speed and the simplicity of working with this large number of data
let's remind ourselves where we are now now we have four tables inside the model we have the three dimension table region channel and product and now we have the transaction table the all sales table let's try to preview this inside the data view look at the counter down here you will see that i have approximately 8 million rows of data and for sure this is impossible if you are working with a normal excel environment you need something that more powerful and give you a lot of capabilities in order to handle this number of records inside one table and now the next step is to start designing our model what i mean by designing the model i mean that you need to create different relations between these four tables in order to help you to get the reports that you want as the requirement that we have at the beginning which is building a report for the sold quantity for the number of transactions and also the average quantity per transaction before rushing into creating the relations between these four tables let me quickly take you to the powerpoint and try to understand the concept of a star schema the star schema is nothing but the design of your model the way that you organize the model and create relation between each and every table in order to get yourself ready for the reporting stage now if you look at this design you will see that i have only one fact table in the model like the one that i have in my excel file now which is all sales and i have five dimension tables that organized around this fact table in a shape pretty much like the star i have the fact table in the center and i have five arms for the star and each and every arm contain one of the dimension tables so i have here the product i have here the calendar the region and then the sector and finally i have a calendar for this example i'm not going to create a calendar table but this is an example of how you can organize your model in a star schema it is also worth mention that every and each relation between these uh, tables is a one to many relation if you look at the icon here the star the star is a symbol for the many and then the one is the symbol for for sure for one so the one to many relation coming from the dimension table the one side and then going to the fact table as the many side let's try to remind ourselves about the one to many relation here is a small preview of the transaction table i need some information from lookup table one which is basically the product table for sure i need the information about the product the category and the price so i need this area of data and for sure the column that i'm going to use to connect between the two tables will be the product id from the side of the lookup table it will be the primary key from the side of the transaction table it will be the foreign key and the relation between both will allow me to bring data from the lookup table inside the transaction table the second lookup table will be the channel table i need the information about the channel the channel name and for sure the key that i'm going to use will be the channel id it will be called primary key inside the lookup table and foreign key inside the transaction table and here is the relation the one to many relation coming from lookup table and going to the transaction table the third table will be the region table another lookup table i need the information about the region the key will be the region id primary key inside the lookup table and foreign key inside the transaction table and relation is going from the lookup table directly to the transaction table and here is the relation that i want to create and it is pretty much like the star and it is the best way that I can use to organize my data inside Excel Power Pivot let's go directly and create our relations I'm going to organize my tables first so I put this here and this one here in order to get a shape like the star so let me start by the product I'm going to go select the product ID inside the product table and then I'm going to drag until the all sales table the transaction table and I'm going to point to the product ID also and I'm going to release my hand here you go the one to many relation created here let me do the same for the region I'm going to select the region ID and then I'm going to click and drag until I reach the all sales table then the column of region ID inside the all sales table then I'm going to release the mouse button and here you go the second relation one to many between the region table and all sale table the final one channel ID inside the channel table I'm going to drag to reach the channel ID inside the all sales table release my click and here you go you have your star schema set now your model is ready and you can start to build your report
we are ready now let's start to rebuild the first report in order to build the report we mentioned before that the output of data model need to be inside a pivot table there is no other way actually there is another way but we'll not discuss now we'll discuss later in the series but now let's focus on creating a pivot table in order to create a pivot table based on this data model i'm going to select the pivot table icon from home ribbon inside the power pivot window let me click on it it will prompt me again to the normal excel window asking you if you want to have the new pivot table in your worksheet or existing worksheet i think making sense to create a new worksheet so i'm going to click on ok it will create a new worksheet and i have here the new pivot table report let me change the title of this sheet to report and also i need to give a name to this pivot table so from pivot table analyze i'm going to call it something like sales underscore product so this will be the sales by product and also category so underscore category and enter now i have the name set on the right hand side i have all the tables i have the all sales which is my transaction table and the three dimensional table i want to build my report let me start from the dimension table this report will be by product so i'm going to select the product table inside the, uh, the product table i'm going to select category in the rows below category let me put the products so i have here list of the categories and the uh, products for each category i want to add some numbers here so from the all sales all sales is my transaction table i'm going to select quantity and drop it inside the value and once i did this you'll have your report ready imagine how quickly how fast did this 8 million rows you are handling this very very quickly inside the pivot table let me add subtotal here i'm going to select the pivot table from design on the left hand side layout subtotals subtotals at top of the group i need to add some number format right click number format i can select number thousand separator no need for decimal places and then okay and here you go you have your report nice and clean and very very quick let's go back to the power pivot window and let's see what happened if i go again to the data view and let me check the all sales now there is nothing written here down here in the measure grid and this is weird because when i drop the quantity column inside the pivot table it calculates the sum and i understand that all the sum or all equations need to be a measure inside the power pivot or inside the data model in order to view this kind of measures i need to go to advanced and from advanced let me go to show implicit measures once i click on it you will see that a new measure appeared here it's not created right now it was created once i drop the quantity column inside the pivot table and if you check the formula bar now you will have it's grayed out i cannot change i can i can't change anything in it and you can see it is called sum of quantity it's a default name this is happening when you drop any column from the, your pivot table inside the values section of the pivot table if it's number it will default to sum if it is anything but number it will default to count and you can see the formula inside which is basically the sum function and then the name of the column and the name of the table so the full name of the of the column which is starts with the name of the table and then the name of the column if you go to the home ribbon now while selecting this check the formatting area you cannot do any formatting so this is what we call implicit measure it creates automatically when you drop any column inside the value section in a pivot table we are not recommending this at all because you cannot change the name it will be always the default name you cannot also change the data uh, type or format you have to stick to the general format of uh, number and you need to change it every time inside the pivot table itself and this is not practical and you are losing a couple of very important uh, features inside your uh, data model so instead of doing this i can create my own sum let me this time call it something like total quantity so i'm going to create a measure and i call it total quantity in order to do this i'm going to select any place inside the measure grid and i'm going to write the name of the measure which will i call it total quantity after the name of the measure i have to put a colon colon meaning that the name is already ended and then equal equals mean that you have to start to write your measure and you see if you look at the measure grid here nothing written it's all written up here inside the formula bar so i'm going to continue i'm going to use the function sum exactly like the one that we have in excel so i'm going to write sum i need to select the all sales table and then the column called quantity i can just select from here or i can just select the column itself if i select 
select the column it will write both the name of the table and then the name of the column finally I need to close the bracket I can use the check mark here in order to commit the formula and here you go the total quantity measure is ready I can just do some formatting let me use something like whole number as a format and also I can use thousand separator and you can see here it is pretty much similar to what created automatically however I can control it I can control the name I can control the number format and what appears here is the total total of all the tables together but when once you drop it inside the pivot table it will do all uh, the slice and dice for you very very correctly so let's go back to the pivot table now I can select the pivot table if I scroll down I'll see here my new measure and notice the FX meaning that this is a measure it is not a normal field it is a measure I can just drop it inside the values and remember that measures can be only used inside the value section of a pivot table and if you compare the two together it is identical but now the number formatting is coming automatically which is very very useful and even if you use the measure over and over the number format will always be correct now I need to get rid of the sum of quantity I can just take it out from the report here and also I can go back to the pivot table window I can just select no need for it at all now I can just select and press delete it will ask you and confirm if you want to delete from data model for me that's fine I can just delete and now we understand the difference between implicit measure and explicit measure always use explicit measure highly recommended you can control the name you can control the number format and you can do whatever you want based on what you need inside your model Now I have a report with the total quantity, however this report is all years together, so I'm looking at the 8 years together, if I want to report by year I can just use the date, but this will not be that much uh, easy, for the time being you are going to look at the date tables next videos, but today let me start to do a small trick in order to look at the years, so I'm going back to the power pivot window inside data view I need to add another column to calculate the year for each and every date so I'm going to just double click on add column let me give it a name like here and then enter it will prompt me to the formula bar I can start to write my DAX formula which will basically based on the years function so I'm going to write here year is a function similar to what we have in Excel it requires a date and it will return the year for this date let me just click on the header of the date column it will write all sales and then date the full name for this column and then hit the enter button and here you go you have all the years inside this column now I can go back to the Excel window I have my report here if you look at your all sales table you will find a new column called year you can just use it inside your pivot table or you can just right click and add as a slicer and here you go a very nice and quick slicer you can select 2011 2018 let me do some formatting for this slicer quickly so I'm going to select the slicer from the slicer ribbon I'm going to add the number of columns to two and let me quickly resize so I have now a very quick report looking at the quantity by the year I can clear the filter or select whatever year I want As per the requirement, we need to add another column to this report to report on the number of transactions. So I need to create another measure. I can go back to the um, power pivot window and add another measure here. However, let me show you another way to create a measure inside your data model. From the normal Excel window, you can go directly to the power pivot ribbon. You can see the section called calculations. Let me select measures. If you select measure, you have two options, new measure or manage measures. I'm going to select new measure. It will open this measures window and you have to follow the steps in order to create your measure. The first one, the name of the table. And let me put all my measures inside one table, which will be the all sales. It doesn't matter just the name of the hosting table just to organize your data model so for me I'm going to put all the measures inside the all sales table the second line is to give a name for your measure the default is measure one for sure but let me give it something meaningful like number underscore TRX 
which is abbreviation for number of transaction and then I can give a description which is very good if you want to add any description to this model you can add one line of description here and then in this box you start to write your formulas and here you have a very good option if you press on control and move the wheel of your mouse you can increase the font so you can see better uh, the function that you are writing so let's start to write the function directly which will be account I need to use the count function in order to count the number of transaction of the all sales table so let me start to write count I have all the options for count 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 a count a x and all this stuff I need only the count double click and here I need to start to select my columns for sure I want to count one column inside the all sales let me select something that contains number for me the best one should be the all sales quantity uh, column so I'm going to count this let me close the bracket at end of the count function this is pretty much similar to the count that we have in Excel so I'm sure that you are familiar with it and here you have a very good option which is check formula if you just click on this it will check your formula and give you a message that no errors inside your formula so you are good to go however before clicking OK you need to check this section which is the category here you select your number formatting I'm going to select number and the format will be a whole number because this is a count of transactions and for sure sound and separator will be very good and finally click on OK if you check now your pivot table you will have your measure already selected inside your pivot table and check here inside the fields name you will see that you have two measures now the total quantity and the number of transactions now we have one pivot table one slicer and two measures and we have the report by category and by product what if I want to add another report can I use the same data model and use the same measure yes of course you can do so let's try together I'm going to select any cell here I'm going to insert and from the insert ribbon I'm going to select the pivot table and here you have all the options from table or range this is not what we need and also from external source this is also not the option that I want I need the last one which is from data model once I click on it it will prompt you again to the same window because I'm selecting already a cell it will prompt you to existing worksheet and the location that already selected let me click on OK it will create another report let's check our measures our measures are here so I'm going to take the measure total quantity and then total transactions and you can notice that it comes with the number formatting let me this time change the fields I'm going to select the channel so the channel will be channel name for sure will be in the rows I'm going to select the region name I'm going to drag it below the channel so I have a report now by channel and then by the region name so I have the first channel door to door and here all the cities or all the regions I need to add the subtotal from design on the left hand side subtotal show all subtotal at top and all the number formatting is working perfectly let me double check the slicer if I select anything from the slicer it will work only with the first table I need to add the second table to the slicer that's very easy select the slicer from slicer ribbon on the left hand side report connections I have only one pivot table selected the next second one called pivot table 3 which is not good let me select for now and then I'm going to change the name of this pivot table I'm going to select the pivot table pivot table analyze left hand side let me change this to something like sales by channel underscore region and enter so if you check now you have all set let me check the slicer again now when I select 2011 2013 all the two tables are changing together which is pretty much good for me in order to meet all the requirements at the beginning of the video I need to add another measure which will be basically the average quantity per transaction let me try to see another way to build a measure inside the model so I'm going to pivot table fields right click on the all sales and I'm going to click on add measures it will open the same window that we used last time and let's start to add the new measure the measure name this time will be average quantity per transaction and then let's go directly to the formula section I'm going to use again the control with the wheel and let's start to write the new measure actually this measure is nothing but using another two measures that already I have inside my model in order to use existing measure I can start with the square bracket if you put the square bracket it will list all the measures that we have I need to divide the total quantity so let me select total quantity and then divide over open bracket the number of transactions and this will give you directly the average quantity per transaction let me quickly check my DAX formula it is working perfectly let's check the category let me select number I think decimal number now is a good and I can add 
one decimal place and also use the sum separator and let me click on OK. Let's check my tables here, the all sales table, and you will see that I have the new measure here, average quantity per transaction. I can just select and put inside the values area. So I have now the total quantity, number of transaction and average transaction per quantity. I can go to the other pivot table, check the all sales again. You will have again here the new measures, average quantity per transaction. I can just put it inside the values area let me insert one column here so all set now i have all the reports that was required at the beginning of the video i have reporting by category and product i have report on total quantity of transaction and average quantity i also have a report by channel and region the same measures used inside the two tables and i have a slicer here i can use it to change the year that i'm reporting inside my two reports now I have everything set. I have my reports. I have my data model ready. I have the two reports. I have all the measures. I have the slicer. Everything is OK. But now I have only two additional years to update, which is 2019 and 2020. And no need for sure to repeat any of these steps that we already did for the past 30 minutes. So let's see how we can do this. Let's go back to our folders. This is the folder that was containing the eight CSV files. I have another one. It contains another two files, one for 2019 and one for 2020. The only action is required from me. Just select these two files, Control X to cut and come here inside the original folder, Control V to paste. This is the only action. I need just to go back to my Excel file and from the data ribbon, I'll see something called refresh all. I'm going to select refresh all and this will refresh everything. We'll refresh the Power Query to update the query with the two new files. It also will refresh the Power Pivot and Data Model and also it will refresh these two pivot tables but remember this will take some time it will refresh all the data meaning that it will reload the 8 million rows and on top of these 2 million rows it will add the new 2 million so a total of 10 million rows will be loaded to the model so it will take several minutes but once done everything will be updated automatically now the 10 million rows updated inside your model you can check here you have the two new years 2019 and 2020 let's check 2020 it's working data is here everything is working perfectly you can't imagine how this is fast when you work with 10 million rows this is really good and really perfect you cannot do this without the data model that was a very very long video we look at several topics we look at four ways to import data into data model and the best was power query we saw how we can work with 10 million rows of data very easy using the data model we look at the star schema we understood what is star schema and how it works we look at the implicit and explicit measures and what's the difference between them we used actually not three dex functions we used five because we used sum, count, left, year, and len as well. And finally, we look at three different places to write DAX measures inside Excel. That was all for today. If you haven't subscribed yet, please do like the video if you like it and leave me a comment. And here you will find some links that you can use it. You will find the first video of this series. You will find the playlist of the Power Query series and also the playlist for the Pivot Table series. Thank you very much for your time. Hope that was useful for you and see you in the next video and bye.